Hey guys, Patriot coming to you tonight from the desktop. I've got one powerhouse uh, machine of a light here. This is the Abyss Dual S. This is Polarian's replacement for the U2. The U2 is a straight 40 watt light. This is a dual wattage. Uh, it has a high and a low, uh, 30 watt low, 45 watt high. Uh, at uh, 30 watts, this thing's making right about 3,000 lumens, and at 45 watts, it's right about 4,500 lumens. Uh, Runtime is uh, 110 minutes low and 70 minutes on high. Uh, that's plus or te uh, minus 10% uh, uh, based on Polarian's figures. I haven't actually done any runtime tests on it. Um, normally, in pictures, uh, my first impression is that this, this handle seems real high on this light, like there's a lot of uh, room in there. Um, it's kind of an optical illusion. I don't know if it's the shape or what, but if I tuck my hand in here like this, I've got just enough room to kind of get my medium-sized hand in there. Somebody with a large hand would probably get in there, but somebody with a real fat hand would probably uh, kind of bottom out. But this is a great overhand, out the car window uh, kind of carry method here. So uh, anyhow, just kind of one of the first things that I noticed. Uh, this light weighs right about 3.7 pounds. Um, actually, I got to kind of look at my notes here because I, yeah, I've, <laughs> yeah, 1.769 kilograms, or about uh, 3.9 pounds with the battery. That 3.7 pounds is coming from the SR90. I just got my uh, my brain mixed up there. Uh, anyhow, this is uh, just by default Polarian's new powerhouse light. And what I mean by powerhouse light is it's their kind of their. Uh, their top dog right now. They discontinued the PF50 uh, a while back just because they weren't getting that 100% reliability that they look for at that uh, 50 watt setting in that smaller chassis. So um, uh, they're back to the PH40 or the P series 40 watt light. The PH is the handled light. The uh, PF is the uh, non overhead handle light. Uh, here's the good old Polarian. PH50 right here. Uh, anyhow, this uh, this light by default is kind of their new powerhouse. You can still buy this light here, uh, but it's going to be the PF or PH40. That's the 40 watt version. Um, considering the price of this light, and I know a lot of people are going to fall over backwards, this is a $1,900 light. MSRP on this is $1,895. Uh, there probably is a little bit better pricing available certain places on the internet. Uh, there's not a whole lot of dealers for this light, but um, I think as I kind of t talk about this light, you'll understand why that's priced the way it is. Uh, you know, somebody with a Glock might have a lot of trouble understanding why a Wilson Combat or a Nighthawk uh, 1911 is priced the way that it is, but there is definitely a difference in the uh, construction, uh, the parts, the way everything's put together, and finally the capability. And when you take a light like this, uh, there's a certain capability that this possesses that uh, really isn't duplicated uh, in any other place in the lighting industry. Uh, there's some lights that are similar and some come pretty close, but this has got some real unique features. Okay, let's pan out a little bit here, give some room on the desktop, and uh, you'll notice that the first thing, the big difference between the P series and the X or the uh, <laughs> Abyss series is the, uh, the length. Uh, the P series is about two inches longer. And uh, although it doesn't seem like a lot, it's amazing how small this light packs down. Uh, this light's 12 inches, this light's 10 inches. Uh, you'll see a difference in the body width. The body width on the P-Series is definitely smaller. This does have a couple of molded uh, plastic uh, segments here, mostly for looks. Um, I don't think that those flanges do much besides that. But the, uh, the body of the uh, PH50 or the P-Series light in general is smaller. It does take a different battery configuration, which uh, I'll show you here. And then I'll tell you why I like the Abyss and the X uh, series form factor so much. So here's the battery that I just pulled out of the PH50. Let's take the tail cap off of this. You'll notice that there's some nice grippy O-rings that are around uh, this tail cap. Those can also be used for spares. 
quite a bit of threading on this because it is a dive light and you'll see it's double o-ring sealed here real nice threads lots of lube provided on those threads right from the factory as a matter of fact the first time I ran this light I got it warm enough because I was doing a couple of uh, battery tests uh, well mostly heat tests not pure run tests and uh, some of the lube actually ran down along the inside here and I had to clean it out but remember I'm over here in Arizona and uh, if I run this light for uh, you know half hour 45 minutes at a, at a time it's gonna get pretty hot so here's that battery uh, now within both of these battery packs are uh, eight times 18650 lithium ion cells those are unprotected cells this is a 4400 milliamp hour pack and same goes for this one um, so by making that shape a little bit more circular, housing those eight cells into this package rather than this one, they do get a, a much shorter overall light. Uh, and two inches on a light of this category is substantial. That's quite a bit smaller, especially when we think that we're putting out uh, about the same amount of light. You can see down inside the tube there, the uh, contacts and the board. Right behind that is the ballast and then the uh, reflector. Uh, you can see this end of the battery makes contact with those down inside. When we put this in, as soon as it makes contact, you'll see that it gives us power indicators there, or battery level indicators. Screw this back on. I notice you kind of have to get this right just at the precise angle to screw on. The threads are pretty close tolerance, and uh, since I'm on this desktop and I've got a good square uh, platform, a nice flat area here, that it's actually pretty easy to put on a tail cap. Now, if I'm just doing it freehand, I notice that I have to do a couple of turns and fiddle with it sometimes. And uh, normally, I line up threads pretty, pretty well. I'm kind of mechanically inclined there. Okay, let's quickly look at the... Um, business end of the flashlight. You can see this is a HID flashlight just like the other Polarians that you've seen in my videos. It uh, uses a special bulb that creates a an arc. There's a gap that an arc spans across and so there is no filament or anything like that. These bulbs are very robust. They have a estimated service life of about 2500 hours. That's going to be on the low side. Typically it's going to be more than that. So uh, what they call a xenon headlamp in a car same technology is happening in this light right here. Xenon is really not the proper uh, terminology, but uh, high intensity discharge or HID would be. You can see the uh, electrode there going to the front of the bulb. And one of the big departures on this light from the others that you've seen reviewed is that orange peeled reflector. Uh, it's still very reflective, but you can see a definite texture there. It's quite obvious. If you look at the PH50, or the Night Reaper or the PH40 that I had before this, they're all going to have that extremely smooth high efficiency reflector. Uh, now these lights, uh, it's not uncommon for these reflectors, that's a 75 millimeter reflector or right about three inches. Uh, these lights will throw side by side with the same wattage light uh, that uh, would be using a maybe a five or a six inch reflector and uh, that's because of the quality of that reflector just its smoothness and the coatings that they put on it uh, these really have super efficient reflectors and it's the reason that you can get 800 yards plus throw out of uh, something this size now even though this light looks very similar to the X1 in appearance uh, there, there are some huge differences that really separate this light. Uh, the first we already talked about, that is uh, that it's a dual mode light. The other X1 originally started life as a 35 watt light and then uh, was turned into a, or updated to a 40 watt light uh, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. It was a real uh, powerhouse, 40 watts and a light this size, it's, uh, it's quite a monster. They upped this one, they upped the, the wattage to 45 and uh, they gave it a, a low a mode of uh, 30 watts. Again, 3,000 lumens and 4,500 lumens. Probably repeating myself here. Um, the next thing uh, is that this has a dive rating. It's rated to 100 meters or 330 feet. Uh, that this is going to remain 100% uh, waterproof. That's a pretty extraordinary feat considering the size of the light and 
when you think about the different things that have to happen to make that waterproof from the tail cap to the head segment to the switch uh, all of these things have to be uh, 100 uh, percent in order for that to to get that kind of a rating that's a pretty serious piece of hardware anything any piece of equipment whether it's a camera housing or a light or any other type of assembly that's rated to uh, 330 feet of uh, ocean water that's a pretty impressive uh, rating uh, next thing is this has a type 3 or a hard anodized finish just like the more expensive P-series light the X1 has a type 2 or a standard anodizing uh, this one does have a removable carry handle you can see right here that there's four allen bolts underneath the uh, handle and it's segmented or it splits right here on each side and this handle can actually clamshell right off of the light so you can be left with just the tube itself and uh, I got bugs in here okay I'm back I had to go close the front door there uh, I burnt some uh, cheese crisp tonight and I uh, got the house all stunk up and had to open up the, uh, the doors um, in any case where was I um, the handle, yeah, the handle comes off, and you've just got this uh, this very compact tube. Now you're going to lose the fine ergonomics of of this handle. I mean, especially with this wider body, this is really the way to carry this light by the handle. Now you could, of course, manhandle the thing like this, uh, but it's going to get heavy at you know almost four pounds after a while. Now, of course, you could run a sling uh, through here. Uh, that would be fine. You can use these heat fins and uh, run an easy sling through there similar to what I did on the SR90 uh, that would uh, let you that would allow you to loop it around uh, your shoulder if you wanted to uh, the next thing is that this has a um, magnetic switch on it uh, now that's just like the X1 and the PH50 here this has the uh, rotating magnetic switch uh, a couple differences this one you can rotate in either direction to turn it on or off. Now remember the battery is out so that's why it's not turning on. So it's just a continuous cycle. Uh, if I turn it this way it turns on, if I turn it again it turns off. Or either direction, it doesn't matter what way you turn it. Every time you turn it one 90 degree rotation or is it... it's 45 degrees. Every time you turn it 45 degrees it's going to uh, turn on or off. This light you specifically have to turn in a given direction. So if I want to turn it on low, I turn it this way. I rotate the switch up this direction. And there you have low output. To switch it to high, I actually turn it back past the off position and switch it over to high. And there's high. You can see the uh, camera trying to compensate there but uh, it's a blaster a lot of uh, uh, I'm squinting right now there's a lot of heat and light coming out of that thing especially reflecting off my hand like that uh, so it does have a direction specific switch the other thing that separates this from uh, other Polarian models is that uh, this light you can see here has a segment has a little allen screw there and another segment down here that's so that this switch can open up kind of like a one one side of a pair of handcuffs and open up and you can actually clean under that switch so it's really going to be good for ocean environment uh, uh, salty environment uh, caving that kind of a thing you know if if I'm out using this light in the dust uh, a lot or you know it's wrapped in a in a backpack it's going to get lint and stuff in there uh, so this is nice that this is cleanable it's a real nice uh, touch and then back to the handle really quickly you notice that this is a different style handle than you see on the X1 so uh, it basically functions the same but you can see this is much thicker much heavier uh, has these uh, more pronounced uh, uh, finger grooves in it and you can see this dovetail system right here uh, that's for a couple of accessories that Polarian makes but I think it might also double uh, to use Acro Swiss uh, camera uh, um, tripod equipment um, somebody suggested that I haven't actually tested it I use all Bogan equipment and Manfrotto equipment so um, not sure about that one you can see it does have uh, tripod attachment points in three areas so that will kind of allow you to get the balance just right if uh, you're using this on a uh, on a some type of a Christmas tree or an un underwater diving light arm apparatus Okay, I showed you this light next to the Polarium PH50. Let's uh, compare it to a couple others. Here is the SR90. 
okay? SR90 is a big light. It's got a big four inch uh, reflector up there. You can see it's completely smooth on the SR90 or it has very little texture as compared to the Abyss Dual. It's a lot longer. I believe this light is 13 inches uh, versus 10 inches on this one. Uh, this light is very slightly lighter, 3.7 pounds versus 3.9 pounds. I can say that this one definitely tires you out less because it does have that overhand grip. Obviously gravity naturally pendulums this to the bottom and so it uh, makes it real easy. With this one, if you hold it on the, on the main battery compartment here, it's always head heavy. So you're constantly using these tendons and, tendons and muscles here to hold the head of the light up. There's a lot of mass up there uh, in order to uh, heat sink uh, that high output LED. Uh, here it is next to the AE light, the 24S. The S is the short version. The regular is 15 inches. This one is just over a foot long. Uh, it's about 13 inches as well. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the difference in reflector size. This is a very, this is a 24 watt light. It's nowhere near the same performance level as this. This is a very slow light to warm up. This is instant, instant on, full power right there we're getting a whole 4500 lumens this actually jumps well above that uh, during the boost phase and then it'll come back and ease back down you see the color temperature changing there it initially comes on a real real white uh, almost bluish about uh, 6500 Kelvin and then it settles back down to about 4300 Kelvin on high on low uh, the Kelvin's going to be a little bit a uh, little bit more towards the warm side Prob pop, I don't know, probably around 4,000, 4,100 perhaps. All right, here's the Kimber Warrior. Uh, Kimber Warrior. Here's the uh, Micro Fire uh, Warrior. You can see that's just about the same length. Kind of gives you an idea of how short the overall length is of the Dual Abyss. Big difference in circumference. But it is, it's really a small light. I'm impressed. The, uh, when, when this thing is on high, it absolutely blows your doors off. It's hard to believe. Here's the 24-watt uh, boxer. Just a couple of other aluminum tube lights. I always like to compare aluminum to aluminum, and so that's what we got. Sorry, guys, I was out of frame there, yapping away. But, yeah, here's the uh, Wolf Eyes 24-watt boxer. And, uh, yeah, here's a uh, modified M6. This is actually an FM megalanium body with a Surefire head. Similar in size to a Surefire M6, except this one houses three 18650 lithium ion cells. A lot more capable than the uh, stock Surefire tube. And, yes, that's what you think it is. It is a 4.7s Maelstrom S12 with a copper heat sink, a big old chunk of copper which is then gold plated. There's only a hundred of these ever produced. That's all that will ever exist and we've got one here on Patriot's desktop. This is in my permanent collection. I own this light. So we'll do a review on that later. So just a sneak peek, just a sneak preview there. Okay guys, in a later video I will get this out and show you what the beam looks like in comparison to some of these other lights that uh, that we just discussed but I want to tell you the uh, performance of these is extraordinary it is it's mind-blowing when you see a couple of sealed uh, high beam headlamps um, on, on high out there on the mountainside and then you turn this on next to it and it's four times as bright as what you're looking at it's uh, and four times the throw it's uh, it's really impressive. It's it kind of opens your eyes to, hey, I guess I haven't seen it all. That's how these lights make you feel uh, when they turn on. You know, just when you think you've seen a lot of bright stuff, something that weighs under four pounds and is so easy to carry, you could carry this. I could mountain bike with this in my backpack. And I know one guy in the Candle Power forums who used to mountain bike with an X1 in his backpack. I won't mention his name. He knows who he is, but. Um, in any case, yeah, this is quite portable. You know, an extra battery is not going to uh, take much room. As you saw before, they're pretty stubby. Uh, you can easily carry. And if you run this light on low, uh, you've got 110 minutes times two of uh, a lot of light output. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, lastly, let's go ahead and take this battery cap back off, and I'll show you what it looks like when it charges. Okay, we'll remove that battery again. 
and I've already got this thing plugged into the wall. Hope I don't shake the tripod there. And you can see when I plug this in, it will give you one or not. Okay, well normally it's going to show me like four LEDs and when the fifth one is blinking, it lets you know that uh, that it's uh, charging that last 20%. When you have a single LED, it says that it's all the way full. Uh, you can also see that from the top. Sorry, I was hoping to give you guys a Christmas tree there, but even though I've been sitting there running this thing, it's still, you know, giving me a full battery uh, sign on this. But anyhow, that's how it plugs in. It's just a normal AC uh, converter. And... Uh, great little battery pack very compact I say that that weighs about one pound I've got my scale right behind me but too lazy to get up and use it oh you can see it doesn't matter which way this thing goes in the transparent tail cap here will show you any direction that battery sitting I'm used to putting it in this way because on the pH uh, on the P-Series, it's actually directional. It's got a groove in there that channels that battery to the 12 o'clock position. Okay, who's uh, serious enough to, to use this light uh, and pay $1,900 for it? Well, the guy who's got his life on the line. The search and rescue guy, uh, the underwater swimmer, the rescue swimmer, the Coast Guard, um, the military. A lot of people, uh, serious professionals, are going to use this light. Some, a lot of the times, the government's flipping the bill. But uh, if you look at uh, some of these cavers uh, that are going underwater, entering these huge chasms where only it really takes a light like this in order to really light something up, um, they're the ones who are going to own this. Uh, and the enthusiast. Uh, if you drop by Candle Power Forums and go to the spotlight section, you'll see that there's some very, very serious people on there. Um, even a lot more serious than I am. Uh, they're building custom lights, but it's just, it's really neat that we can get a product like this that is such a, it's such a benchmark or a level of high performance for a, a factory light. A light that you can actually go out there and bet your life on and you know that the thing's going to work. Um, that's what Polarian gives you and that's what the Dual Abyss gives you. So, that's about it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it kept it interesting there with getting some other lights in the mix. And uh, I wasn't going to show that much of the, uh, the Maelstrom, but we'll save that for another review. Uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your views and comments. As always, really appreciate it. We'll catch you later. Page read out.